So this is what a page with illumination looks like in a manuscript. And if you imagine, this is a modern one, but if you imagine this in the Middle Ages with candlelight in a church, when a page turns and you actually see your face reflected in the page, um, it's quite a different experience than just seeing gold on a panel. So I've been doing some stuff with different types of metal leaves and gold leaves for um, some different experiments. So I'm going to show you some old things and some new things. So this is a piece that was done by Gurley Hewitt. And um, he's, well, he's passed away, but this is the early 1900s. Um, this book is probably seven inches tall, but that gilding on the left is 23 karat gold gilding. So these are some of the traditional tools that you use. Um, oak ball ink, which you make out of those little round balls. That's an oak ball. You see them around here on the oaks. They're a wasp's nest in a, stuck on the tree. Um, anyway, those are reed pens and bamboo pens and a quill. And the alphabet is from the 1300s. So this is much older, and this is gilding on the page, the halo. The blue is lapis, it was ground gemstone. It was more expensive than gold. Um, the green is probably malachite, or possibly verdigris. The red orange is probably minium, which is poisonous. Um, a lot of times these things were poisonous. So this is me working with bronzing powder and polymers, trying to get the color that rose matter gives you, which is the pinky red, and the orange red is medium. In my case, it's not medium because medium is poisonous. But. And then this is natural dyes down on the lower right that one of our students collected on uh, Jasper Ridge. And then uh, the picture on the top is colored pencil with um, a charcoal pour and gold leaf on acrylic palm. So here's another page, but this page is having problems. You can see the gold is fading off and rubbing away here. This is called texture quadratic style. And this is white lead. All these little things are white lead. So it's lead, so it is poisonous. The red orange is minium, and the blue is lapis again. And the gold leaf on the big D is looking pretty well in here. There's only a few places that it's flaking out, but they had to figure out how to get it to stick down, so they used gesso which was white lead and um, a sugary substance and then fish glue. And here's some more lapis and possibly azurite in the upper right hand corner. Lots of little gold dots on the sides. And this gold is um, shell gold, which is when you s dust off the gold leaf, there's a lot of little fairy dust that comes flying off and you can collect it and make it into a paint. It's not as smooth a surface, but works. So this is me working on gesso on a canvas panel with acrylic. Um, quinacridone rose is a color that's been made to try and simulate <coughs> rose matter. So the upper scanning electron microscope image is the, the suede side on a piece of leather. It's very, very high magnification. Um, and then the lower one is where the hair follicles come out. So that's the outside of the animal the top is the inside of the animal. You would sand it down and then you would letter on it with oak ball ink. And you can see by the size of the fingers that this is a pretty small book, but there's a smaller one coming. And this one has um, vermilion and lapis again. So this is me working on a, a panel with inks and dyes and photo transfers from um, an old cathedral in England that they are letting fall apart, and so they're trying to figure out ways to raise money to keep it intact. So these are very worn out images, but I thought they were so wonderful. And then this one is using sumi ink, um, both um, Japanese ink, Chinese ink stick, and then running it down the page with a garden hose to see what kind of images you get as it ripples. So it ripples and moves as it runs across the page with water. This is another one from that same cathedral. And this is uh, encaustic, which is beeswax and damar varnish. And then you can embed things in it and then wall it in. Again, working with the uh, encaustic kind of things. The lower one is the gesso panel. And then I put acrylics over it. 
which the acrylic dries and constricts and makes cracks, almost like an oil painting when they have the crack of the on an oil painting, except for this is acrylic, so it stays stuck to the page. And the one on the left is meant to simulate the texture of leather, so there's a lot of um, wrinkles in the surface. This is purchased black ink on the left. So you can see that some ink turns brown when it's dissipated, some ink turns sort of a blue-gray black. Um, and then that's a piece of watercolor paper. That's the surface you paint on up close in a scanning electron microscope picture. And this is when you tear the edge of the watercolor paper and make a double edge, that little hairy fuzzy thing. Like that. So again, this is using gold leaf on the acrylic polymer to make it stick down with the charcoal core. The charcoal pour is you put charcoal on the page and you stand for as tile as you can get and drop water on it and it, when it hits the charcoal there's this very interesting phenomenon that occurs. This is using acrylic clear gesso which has a gritchy, funny feeling to it and when you let it dry you can get some really nice effects um, by the striations of the surface underneath and then you can use pastel. This is just a little illuminated letter. It's, it's actually very tiny, but made large. Those are sort of the colors that were used in medieval manuscripts so I picked that. This is um, lacquer-based ink. So if you know Jackson Pollock's work, when he used the paint that he used, a lot of times it was car enamel or lacquer-based ink, which is really bad for you to breathe. And um, golden acrylics made a special paint to have the drawing capacity for the movie Jackson Pollock because they wanted it to simulate the exact throw that he would get when he did his paintings. Well, it's really fun to mess around with, but it smells horrendous and um, it's very, very bad for you. But I, I put it on and then scraped it off and then added the gold leaf. And these are traditional things. So minium, down at the bottom right, that has, um, that's poisonous. White lead is poisonous. Rose matter is not poisonous, but I wouldn't advise eating it. Orchamin is poisonous. Um, vermilion. Lapis and indigo, I don't think, would do as much harm. Logwood is made from this. Uh, this image you can't see too well, but it looks like a bunch of fuzzy hair. But it's a, it's a uh, wood that you can then put water on. The first time I ever saw it was in a little children's chemistry set. And I put water on it, and it first turned turquoise. And then it turned blood red. Mm -hmm. And I decided, oh, I need to try this. <laughs> so this is a printer's ink that you can use nowadays, which is not so smelly, not so bad for you, and it's black ink on a woodcut. So this is what our refrigerator often looks like with all these poisonous things in them. Um, this one says glare. So this is egg white that's been whipped to make it into sort of a meringue, but no sugar. And they let all this stuff drip out of the bottom. And what drips out is what you can also put gold leaf on. So this is um, Barbara Wolf, who's an East Coast calligrapher, but it's a really nice image of her working on a miniature. That's her thumb and her forefinger, so you can see how tiny that brush is. And here she's laying gold leaf on the gesso side. So the gesso's been put down, it's been allowed to dry, then she breathes very heavily on it, and then it gets kind of sticky because you're breath activates it, and then you put the gold leaf on and burnish it down. So these are some weird scanning electron microscope images of pigment. Two of them are pigment. One of them is uh, something else, so I want you to see if you can figure out what they are. Now, if this is the pigment, and this is the binder that holds the pigment together, what do you think about this paint? What's it going to do? <coughs> it's, it's, the name of the paint is Opera, which is sort of Barbie pink, but um, it ends up, those little bowling balls all fall out. Uh, it's very uh, fadey. It's not a very good pigment, but it's kind of fun to look at. And um, that's slate plaster, so that's what you would put the gilding onto. So this is a replica of old-fashioned gilding done in the early 1900s, and then that's an original 
from one of the Stanford um, special collection books. So the gilding is very smooth and even, and also very smooth and even here. That's reflecting the light above when the picture is being taken. And so there, the red on the D itself is matter. The orangey red is medium, um, probably malachite for the green, and they would have browned their own pigments. So we make students do that when they take our class. Um, this is an old version with some um, bookworm holes up at the top on this uh, upper left piece. That's a piece of mine that, again, is very small, but we need to dig some slides. And then this is um, part of the book from the first slide I showed you with some gilding on it. Now, this is a thumbnail on the right. So you can see how tiny that book is and how hard it must have been to write that tiny. That's lapis, and if you look around the letters, there's really tiny, you probably can't say, filigree of little swirly lines with the red, and that's the minimum. So, anyway, this is the idea of a pocket book, long before pocket books became. So this is walnut ink, ready-made, which has a preservative in it. It doesn't work as well as if you start with the crystals itself. Walnut ink is actually named after the color. They used to use walnut ink. And if you've ever picked up a walnut and seen it stain your hands, you know it does stain. And the thing on the right is an oak ball. So again, that is a different image, but the same kinds of tools. And this is a French version of black leather called the car. And those are tools. Here's the pigment being ground. This is the egg white goo that comes out of the bottom called glare. And this is scraping up the palette knife, and that's muller to make the paints. And then that's egg yolk up at the top to do different colors. So there's a piece of papyrus with a scanning electron microscope picture. So you can see how they would lay the plant fibers this way, and then they would lay them that way and pound them. And their striations, the layers, build up. So you make this very strong thing that came long before vellum or parchment or um, So this is um, walnut ink with ultramarine uh, watercolor in it. And when you put water over walnut ink after you've let it dry, it will pick up, and this slide doesn't show it, but it's somewhat golden, like yellow mm -hmm. ochre. So this is using um, sap green paint and the walnut ink and sepia ink. So now there's some glue sticks. Some of you know glue sticks. So if you think, well, what could I possibly do with that? So you can build up working with the glue stick, working with handmade paper and paint <coughs> to put together some pieces that are kind of interesting and have a very three-dimensional look. This is working with um, the polymer again and adding a, a foil, a metallic foil. This is another piece that has foiling in it, gold and silver. This is a little teeny piece with some copper and gold. And this is 23 karat gold leaf on a little gesso band. And we're going to pencil and um, the foil that looks silver. You can't use silver to do gilding because silver tarnishes. You can use platinum, but um, the silver will turn black. And this is a very rough watercolor paper, handmade paper. So here's a close-up of the printer's ink piece, and then the gold was added onto it, and then um, that's the whole thing all together with the strands. An interesting piece in that I scraped away wherever the colors are showing, those are the first colors that were on it, and then I put a dark color, and as I scraped it away, light colors came through, the bright colors came through. Here's um, gold leaf on a large panel, and that is actually all black paint, but different brands of black paint reacted differently with the gesso, and so I got this really weird texture, and I got blue in some places and brown in others. 
So here's a dryer sheet. So you think about that, polyester. What can you do with that? Well, if you use a heat gun on it, you can get some really interesting effects. I mostly do these things when my husband's not home. Because he's a chemical engineer, and he'll probably I'll be happy about some of those things. <laughs> so again, dryer sheets, stranded uh, with a polymer on them, and then melted onto the canvas. So this piece is 40 inches by 40 inches. It's a really large piece with stains and dyes on it. There's a close-up of the one with the fractal patterns. This is um, from CERN. It's um, the particle physics lab. They can't track the particles. They can't take pictures of them. They're too tiny. But when they move through a bubble chamber, they make little bubbles as they go. And they can take pictures of the bubbles. So this is pictures of the track that it left. And it inspired me to start doing some things with some tracks and some charcoal pour again. This is a, a famous calligrapher from Ireland. His name's Dennis Brown. And he's, this is an original piece that he did, and then he had it printed. So the foil that he used, the gold on this on the top, of the brown, let's say brown speckles, but it's actually gold, that's um, then foil stamped. So this is his piece. It's a really beautiful quote about. Um, writing. Uh, it's by Friedrich Neudenbauer from Austria. And this filigree stuff is something that was done a lot in the 1700s. All the calligraphy, and he's made it much more modern to do it. This is the acrylic gesso, but the clear gesso with the rough texture with pastels. That's acrylic that I made crackle. This is a piece that, when I heard about her talk, and uh, the, some of the other people with the cosmology, when I went in the backyard with a piece of black paper, I put white paint on a black page and used the hose to run off water and paint. And I got this very interesting image that reminded me of the Hubble telescope picture. So then I took a bamboo pen and wrote the alphabet in it. And then around the edge, it has a quotation about the birth of a star in, in the platinum block. So new materials and old materials, this happens to be writing done with the Coca-Cola cans, the corner off Coca-Cola can. It's by Peter Thornton, who's from Eagle. This, these are some side views of the texture on some pieces that I've done, and then some of the credits. And one of the credits that's not on here is Ben Muir did all the scanning electron microscopy pictures for us. He um, fell in love with the art materials and Kurt had to keep watching him because he kept dashing back in and making more pictures of art materials. Wow. So again, copper in a polymer and gold leaf. Mm -hmm. These are watercolors in between the copper. So that's it.